everybody, welcome to the infamous Lukla Airport. Today we're going to be taking out the Keenair C90 GTX on a short flight to Fapalu Airport, which is just about 10 minutes away, actually, flight time. It won't be too long at all to get there. Uh, yeah, real short one to do. So, this is the new scenery published by Aerosoft, and it was developed by LimeSim for Aerofly FS2. And it is probably now the best representation of Lukla Airport and the surrounding regions. Uh, I did a short video, first look, on the FS Elite channel recently, and uh, that goes into more depth about the the areas around here, and uh, you know, because it's not just the airport. You're not just getting the airport, you're getting this airport. Uh, about four to five others done in pretty great detail, and then uh, the rest are, you know, kind of more generic, but they're there, you know, for the airports. But uh, if you've ever seen photos of this airport, this is very accurate to the, the colorful buildings and uh, just that kind of detail. So we're going to make a right up here, and actually, you, um, you go up here and you turn around more on the flat part. If you start in the uh, right into the uh, the downhill portion of the runway, it can be a little difficult, and you may not have enough time to get off the runway in time before you uh, run into the fence at the end there. If you can see written up there, I believe they probably wrote that in stone, Luckla Airport. It's pretty nice. Gray looking mountains. Um, usually doing these departures in the morning, uh, the weather is a lot nicer in the morning in this region as far as uh, the visibility, the clouds moving in. Uh, I guess typically in the evenings you can't really see much. I mean before dark even. Uh, that's when the clouds like to move in in the afternoon and that's when it can become pretty dangerous to leave this airport. So we're going to do our rollout now on this fun downhill runway. Nothing like it. Nothing quite like it. Anyway. Something knots. 80 and we'll rotate. Not quite sure all the speeds on this uh, this aircraft. I, I picked the Keen Air C90 just because it's uh, one of the more appropriate aircrafts, I guess, that would be at this airport. I don't know for certain if these Keen Airs come in here, but uh, this is more like the type of aircraft uh, at this airport. So I usually don't do this. I usually don't show a departure replay, but being this is luck, we're going to do that. But again, Aerofly FS2 is just, it's a really nice sim. And uh, this leads me to talk about what we saw recently over the weekend. We had Flight Sim Expo and then uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator was announced through a trailer. And it, it looks pretty good from the trailer. I really hope this ends up being good. I, I'm, I'm going to get it either way, uh, you know, to try it out for myself. But I just really hope this ends up be a uh, successful project and I, I don't think it'll take too much to run it for your system I really think they've probably figured it out you know the problem with prepared and uh, you know using FSX to today is it, this is you know it was written on on code in an engine that was started in around 2006 and uh, you know changed slightly and, and built upon and updated but still the groundwork of it, the foundation, was a very old engine, and I, I like with Airfly FS2, it, it, I run everything at ultra and max, and I have no problems, no complaints, it runs everything smoothly, it utilizes the hardware properly, and it's just packaged and done in a way that works to modern hardware, and I think that will be the case with Microsoft Flight Simulator, I don't think you're going to have to worry about, you know, I mean, there's people, we, that have, 1080 Ti and you still might struggle to get 30 frames per second in prepared depending on the situation and it just shouldn't be that way and I think that is something that we'll move away from with uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and, and any future simulator. X-Plane has gotten a lot better on frames uh, just from the updates over the, the months and year so that's really good. 
Um, but back to this flight, we're going to go up to just 12,000 feet. We're going to stay along the river here and then come around for the, uh, the airport, like I showed you in the, in the plan here. I did uh, GPS coordinates, actually my own, um, because there's no VORs or waypoints really of interest to, to try to navigate through here. So I just made my own. And you can see they translate on the map when you uh, draw up the plan. So that's all I did. I just planned it along where the, the river is. It's almost a canyon, you know, so I can stay lower. I didn't want to get too high. There are, uh, the mountains do get pretty tall around here, so I didn't want to really cross too much from the mountains. And I don't know what the, what I'm going to run into here as far as the clouds go. But yeah, this is a scenery that'll really let you practice some mountain flying. A lot of interesting airports around here. The one we're going to in particular it's pretty interesting. Another uphill runway. Not quite as bad as Lukla, which is a, a 10 foot change from the base to the top. But it is a, an uphill one and um, one where you're, you're facing the mountains just ahead of you. If, should you have to do a, a go around. But um, yeah, this is, a, this is a great one. Great one to add. I just keep building my Aerofly library. I'm a pretty big fan of this sim. I love the way it looks. I love the way it flies, the way it handles. It's uh, it's a good one. Definitely for VFR flying, you know. I like to use all the sims. The only one I can't use right now is prepared. Can't get it to download. Not coming in, you know. And it comes in corrupt every time, no matter what I do. So I haven't been using prepared as much. And uh, I've been okay with that. I've, I've been using mainly X-Plane 11. And... Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to use that. I really am liking X-Plane. I used Prepared for so many years that, I, you know, I think it's okay to use X-Plane as my, my main sim right now. But um, I wouldn't steer anyone away from not experiencing all. Each one has a little piece of, of something different that the other one doesn't. And, uh, you know, you just got to use them as tools. Use them for, for what you want to fly and what you want to do on any particular day. Anything VFR, I would definitely recommend Aerofly. Uh, as Sergio pointed out from uh, uh, Helisim, he uh, he was saying the, the helicopter, the Bell in this uh, in Airfly FS2 is probably the best helicopter experience you can get right now, hands down. And um, it was cool to hear him confirm that because I tried it, and uh, I don't know much about helicopters. I just know the difference of I, I've flown them in X plane, I've flown them in prepared, and I just know how each you know they feel as far as that. And when I tried it in Aerofly, I knew this. I knew something was different. It was, it, there, there's a lot more. I, I don't know. It's like the edges are rounded off, smoothed off with, uh, with Aerofly. When it comes to the, the flight dynamics, how you feel it, how when you're controlling the plane, I, it's it's kind of hard to describe. Like with prepared in FSX, it's almost like a blocky feeling in a way, and it's almost like with Aerosoft or uh, with with Aerofly FS2. It's more of a smooth, rounded off, the edges were rounded off feeling when, when you steer these planes. Now I'm actually using, a, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but a, a flight stick. I have the Yoko plugged in, but Aerofly FS2 doesn't support the Yoko. Um, and then I have my uh, SciTech Yoko plugged up in a, in, with another situation, uh, simula simulator that I'm trying to put together. But uh, So I'm just using the stick with this, so it's, it's a little uh, different to get used to. Got a little patch of clouds here, and we're about to make a right turn, uh, pretty much, if I had to say. We're beyond the, we're on the base leg right now. We're pretty much on the, well, downwind, about to, about to approach the base leg for, uh, for the runway here at Fop Blue, which I hope I'm pronouncing right, um, but I think you guys like it. It's a pretty cool airport, and like I said, it's uh, another one that they did with some pretty good detail. It's just fun to, to go into these these airports but um flight sim right now is uh you know this is june of 2019 and flight sim i just think is just reaching the peak of uh of popularity i think it's getting more and more popular and um really what's going to draw people in is the i think for for one thing even the outside people that aren't uh aviation enthusiasts or, or just you know, not really fans of airplanes, but they're, they're seeing this simulator, they're seeing the trailer, 
how good the graphics appear to be in the trailer. We, I hope they actually are that good. Um, I've been fooled before by trailers like that, so I don't want to just assume. But I, I, I know they're telling us that, that it's from the actual simulator, but, um, you know, we'll see in time. You know, this will be, uh, it sounds like a 2020 release. 2020 would be, a, I think, a pretty big year for Flight Sim. And uh, on from then, these uh, conferences are only getting bigger. Cosford has moved to two days. The numbers keep getting bigger and bigger every year for the uh, the attendance amount. And it uh, looks like Flight Sim Expo is going to be in Vegas next year, which I'll definitely be attending that. I'm going to... Um, it, it's really close to me. Nevada's close, so that's always an easy place to get to. Orlando was a little difficult for me this year, but uh, just because of my situation I'm about to have a, a newborn in my house in a few weeks so I uh, just definitely didn't want to miss that delivery so I didn't go out to Orlando but uh, next year I'll be in Vegas and um, I'm most likely going to be at Cosford in a little bit too looking uh, looking forward to that that's the the next one so the road to Cosford has begun from here from June so we'll be planning that uh, lots of interviews will be coming out on the FS Elite channel that were filmed at FS Expo just starting to get those uh, uploaded uh, the footage uploaded to me and I'll be working with that here pretty soon and uh, yeah we'll be getting getting all that stuff out there but uh, FS Expo was pretty interesting it was fun following it all weekend um, and uh, yeah watching all the presentations so we're really close now we're gonna be making our approach and descent down into Fatplu this uh, airport sits just at about 8,000 feet we're at 12 so we'll come down 4,000 and it's kind of a hard airport to spot, so um, I've learned the visual cues of it, and I can try to point them out to you, too. So if you come in uh, from this direction, you'll know where to find it. Because where it looks like on your uh, map display, where it's showing you the air runway is, it's almost like it's a little offset to the left, I noticed. So you got to be careful with that. And Because uh, I went into this airport recently when I was doing the uh, other video for the FS Elite channel. I was checking out this airport and I was noticing that. So you gotta be careful. So we're gonna make the turn down, line up. But yeah, the future is looking really bright for Flight Sim. From uh, the moment I got into it, I could tell it, it hadn't it hadn't even close to, to tapped into the, the popularity that it could have. And uh, like I said, I think these graphics are very appealing to people. Um, you know, simulators like Prepared and X-Plane don't really get mentioned in E3, uh, to my knowledge. Um, so this is kind of like Flight Sim back in the, the main public's face, you know, uh, in, a, in a big way, in the biggest, bright, the biggest way that it ever has. You know, plus these E3 conferences have gotten much bigger since the 2000s. Uh, when they were, uh, you know, probably showing off uh, FSX back then, you know, it probably wasn't as big of a deal. But I think this trailer was impactful enough, edited very well. They showcased a lot of stuff. Uh, it would have been nice to see a helicopter or something, though I'm sure there's going to be helicopters. Uh, but, yeah, um, don't want to speculate too much on it. All I can say is, uh, you know, I tried to sign up or not tried, I, I signed up for the Insider program, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, probably get uh, selected for a build, hopefully, at some point. If not, I think maybe through FS Elite, maybe we'll, we'll get a chance to work with uh, the simulator at some point, some capacity, to try it out. And uh, that would be, that'd be great, because I'm interested, very interested in this. I think uh, everybody's eyes are on it. For the video alone, to do... Uh, Last I checked, it was over 3 million views in two days. I don't think I've ever seen a flight sim video of any type. Um, you know, let alone do 3 million views, but then do 3 million views in um, in uh, that short a time. That is, uh, that's very good. You know, I think that's good for flight sim. You know, if we get more people into this hobby, it's, 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 it can be a good thing to have that, that type of community. And uh, I think it's reaching that, like I said, that, a, a new level of popularity and that's done through things like infinite flight which brings uh flight sim to a lot more people that may not be able to you know 
when I was a kid, I couldn't afford uh, expensive computer parts or anything, and, and, you know, it's just a lot of people can't afford these computers that properly run these sims, or they don't even know where you download this stuff, but, you know, people who have the App Store on a phone can just pull up uh, Infinite Flight and, and start flying on their phone anywhere at any time. So that little things like that, you know, I know people like, you know, uh, try to say it's not a real simulator, but it's it's still getting people, it's the gateway into the hobby for some people, I feel, or or just uh, fills that gap in. If they, they want to virtually fly planes, but they just they can't afford a computer, most people have cell phones and you can play it that way and get your... Uh, like I've heard Laura say, your your uh, your flight fix, because uh, that's what a lot of some people are searching for. They just want to fly a plane. They may not want to do it to to the uh, great lengths of detail that that some of us want to. They just want to fly and mess around, and and that's a a great avenue to doing that. So if you look here, you can see off to the I don't even know how I will describe this. Um, if you look at the peak of the mountain off to the right, and then look down, there's like a light patch over there of, of something, a field or something, like a, a little bit to the right, almost lined up directly with my uh, primary display right now. That's the runway, that little area there. So, yeah, to me, it doesn't look... Well, now that I'm looking at it now, it actually looks pretty lined up on the map, uh, but before it didn't, at least when you're, you're further out, I guess. Um, but yeah, we're making our approach now. We're about uh, five miles out from the airport. So I'll be silent on the approach. Talk with you again on the ground. We'll sign off and, and uh, we'll go from there. So. 2,500. Down on the runway, uh, not as quite as soft as a, a touchdown that I would like, but managed to get the center line. We're just gonna slow down up here and turn around. Always love the runways where you you get to taxi and turn around on the runways. Those are always fun. Nice looking grass out here. Replay doesn't look as look as bad, but um, you know, a firm touchdown is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, Managed to get it onto the the touchdown zone. I've been missing that lately. I've had a lot of uh, a lot of floaters lately when I've been flying. Now we're taxiing our way back. Nice clutter cars, planes sitting out there. Might have been a C two O eight B. I didn't get a, a good enough look at it. Um, but yeah, you got people. There's some cats up there. They don't move, but they're they're static. It's just kind of funny that they're there. Uh, but this is an interesting airport. It's gonna It's almost cut out into the mountain here. These would be really fun places to go to. Scary to, to land at these airports and take off from them, from them, but uh, fun to see, that's for sure. But yeah, that's uh, that was it. Uh, just really wanted to take you guys out for uh, a little spin around the uh, outside area of Lukla. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. We had a little commentary about the simulator and the and the current events in Flight Sim, so that was nice to do. Something you know, I gotta fill the the flying gap in here for for the time being.
So, uh, yeah, guys, thank you for the continued support. I'll be live streaming soon. Uh, I've really been flying around in the, in the 390 Premiere, and I'd uh, really like to get a stream done in that, because that's a, it's a pretty smooth plane to fly, so comfortable to uh, bring it on stream. So, we'll be doing that soon. You'll have to look out for that video. Try to get it up a few days in advance. Uh, but yeah, we'll just be we'll keep pushing on with Aerofly. I'm intrigued to be checking out this stuff. They have the new life pack and whatnot, so we'll be checking it out later. You guys take care. Thanks for watching.